Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video I'm going to talk about something which is relatively simple. Breadboards and perforated board. For electronics you often find yourself needing to prototype certain circuits, so you need to build something and you want to prototype it up and make sure it actually works before you commit to making a circuit board for it. Now you use like a commercial manufacturer such as PCBWay or JLC, PCB or PCB Go Go, or any of those other ones that are out there. There's loads of PCB manufacturers. But sometimes you want to prototype it up first to make sure it's actually going to work before you commit to designing a circuit board and getting it manufactured because that will cost you money. This doesn't cost you much money. Breadboards and perf boards are super handy. So I used to use these perf boards myself a lot. This is what I used to do, a lot of stuff. I used to build circuits just like a one-off circuit. If you're not doing many of them, just doing one of them, you can use this. It's fine. No reason why you can't use a bit of perf board. And this is basically a punched ball, and see it's got these holes through it, and it's got strips of copper down it. There's another one as well, I think it's like called Vero board, I think it is, and it's actually just dots. It's actually just got individual pads around each hole, which are all separate from each other. This actually has rails running down it instead, which you can see there hopefully. All right, so it's a little bit different. This is a very similar design to what's in these breadboards. Very similar kind of concept, so it's sort of in rows. Vero board has got its own place as well. You can actually link pads together and do like wire wrapping and stuff on the back of the boards and, and configure the circuits that way. Can be a bit easy for layout sometimes. This is my preferred way though. And breadboards, to give you an example of a couple of things I've been messing with on here, you can lay circuits up on these, you can put an IC in here for example, and then you can hook up the IC to the power supply rails and inputs and outputs and what have you, and test it, or you can build up an entire circuit and get breadboards much bigger than this. This is basically four breadboards, as you can see, four individual breadboards side by side, and you have to do all your linking for your power supplies, you have to do it out yourself. And you can see I've got an ESP32 module sitting here, which I was using for doing some prototyping on something, and some other stuff, which has all been bent over because I've had the thing sitting around for a little while now, and it's been, it's fallen over a couple of times and bent the legs over but it's just these DuPont cables which are really handy for doing this sort of thing too because you just plug them into the boards so if you don't have these look at doing any kind of prototyping and designing your own circuits and you want some bread boards because it's as easy as getting to DuPont cables like this which are really cheap to get you can even make your own if you want plugging the circuit together you can put your individual components in so right you want this particular IC you put that in there you need some resistors capacitors and things like that on it maybe diode or LED put those in the board hook up these just line them all up so why these balls are laid out, these are actually done in columns. So this main area here, those are done in columns, right? So it's five high in this particular situation. It's different types of big balls, but a lot of them are this kind of format. They're basically all vertical, right? So that column is one connection. This column is one connection. That's one connection, right? So all isolated from each other. So there's a five, so if you did five columns, those five columns are isolated from each other, but those five connections in that direction connect together. Then you've got these horizontal rows here, these are around. That's five which are connected together across. And so you can use those for doing power distribution. So you stick power on one end of the rail over here and the other end there. So you pass some minor supplies, link across each break, because sometimes you want to do that. And then you can run a power rail up and down the whole length and then you can just tap off that power rail and that sort of stuff. Like this mess of wires up here, this is a test circuit I built for testing the displays are designed for the Datron multimeters. I designed a replacement PCB display module, which is to replace the broken displays and those things, because they're old vacuum fluorescent displays and they're really hard to get. Well, you can't get them now, really, apart from salvaged ones, my old broken units. And I designed a circuit board for that. And this is my test circuit here, so I actually plug a display board into this, and it will light up all the LEDs on it and make sure it actually works. So that's what that's doing sitting there. Really handy things to have, simple things. I highly recommend you get one. I mean, often you'll just get a single bread ball, which is like this sort of size. Not a single unit, but that sort of size. That's what you'd normally get. Even just getting one ball, that's invaluable. So if you want to be doing any kind of prototyping or circuit design, you need something like this. And some DuPont cables. Another thing you can get, actually, if you don't necessarily want these big long cables, sometimes it's fine. In most cases they're fine, but they get messy. You can actually get little jumper packs. You can actually buy little packets of jumpers on AliExpress, for example. It's a little assortment box, and it's got these different jumpers which are different lengths, which means if you want to link between different pens on here, say if you want to jump across a couple of pens, there's a jumper which is already pre-made, just get it, plug it in, you're done. And it's basically as short as possible, which can be really handy. So here you go, here's these cable sets I was talking about. So I've got some really long ones right down to really short ones, which span a couple of poles on the actual connectors. So I've got a couple of sets here. One thing with breadboards is I do have issues with capacitance. They introduce capacitance, so if your circuit is very sensitive to that, it could potentially make your circuit misbehave or behave a little bit differently. So it's something to keep in mind. 
The other thing is connections. Now these breadboards, some are better than others, some are high quality, some aren't. Some of the cheaper ones can be problematic with connections and they can actually give you trouble with, you plug a, po a point in, they may not actually make a good connection. The more expensive ones are better because the metal that's used inside the connections are usually slightly thicker, a bit more robust, they hold on a bit tighter, a bit of a tighter grip, they don't tend to deform as much as well. The cheaper ones, the metal is quite thin. Sometimes they'll bend and they'll stay bent. And so then from that point on, you don't get a good connection anymore. Um, obviously these are reusable, so when you finish designing a circuit on it, you can pull everything off, use it against something else. Check out the playlist over here for the rest of the video series. There's a place over here YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link here, which I think you should do. You definitely should subscribe to my channel and see all the stuff I'm making. And there's a Patreon support link if you want to donate to the channel and help me to make more content. Bye.